We are in Rabat in the capital city of Morocco and we are going to check out the architecture of Rabat a little bit. So the modern part of the town is just very contrasting to the old part of the town and it's extremely interesting. Right now we are in the center of Rabat and behind you can see the mausoleum. So that's the place where the former king Mohammed V and both of uh, his sons are buried. So if you look around you have the mausoleum, then you have the mosque which is basically an open air mosque with a minaret and then you have this uh, cute little park. Now this viewpoint is a strategic point because from here you can see a lot of things. Now this tall building is the Mohammed VI Tower and this other very modern building is the big theater of Rabat. It's July 2023 and neither of those two buildings are open yet. But they just told me yesterday that next month the king might come and he just opens both of uh, those buildings. By the way, this building, it's not just the tallest building in all Morocco, but apparently it's the tallest building on the African continent. It has 255 meters. So yes, Rabat is going to have this very important building on the African continent. And then once they open this big theater of Rabat, that's going to be the largest cultural center in the Arab world. By the way, if you look at it, it's supposed to represent a head of a cobra. Now this seems like a very calm and quiet park and place. But if you would come here in the evening, it's full of families sitting here like on this uh, grass everywhere. But also it's really funny because during the day, even if you just like step on the grass, then there are these people who supervise the public areas and they are just going to yell at you that uh, you cannot step on the grass but then after like 6 p.m. it's uh, allowed to go on these uh, areas with grass so families just come and they just bring chairs and food and that's where they hang out. In general I like Rabat. I came to Morocco more than three weeks ago and I flew to Casablanca and from Casablanca we've been traveling across the country. We crossed the High Atlas Mountains, then the Middle Atlas. We visited the Sahara and a nomadic family, a forest. So the country is super diverse here in Rabat. You have all these very pretty modern parts. Everything is green and they are really trying to take care of it but then also you have this very traditional uh, part for example the old town or the Medina by the way there is this very pretty part which uh, reminds me Greece so much it's one of the oldest parts of uh, the city in that part of the city the streets are extremely narrow they are white and uh, they use blue color a lot so it reminds you Greece uh, we are going to check it out now there is also a river that crosses the city and it actually divides Rabat with another town which is called Saleh and that's on the other side of uh, the river. All these little boats are usually local fishermen so this is why they also organize a fish market very often like down the street. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> What are these? Picture of the fish. Okay. Now this is the part of Rabat that looks a little bit uh, like Greece with all these white houses and blue doors.
but this quarter is a very touristic spot i would say like during the day there are a lot of people selling their artisanal stuff and also there is a couple of uh, coffee shops and there is a very nice viewpoint where we just arrived like right now but it's a view to the Atlantic Ocean and from here you can see the place where the river which uh, is basically dividing Rabat with Saleh that's the place where the river uh, meets the ocean so it's like the gate to the Atlantic We're here really nearby the ocean. They have a cemetery down there. And if you look at the other side of the street, that's also part of a huge cemetery. What is a big part of Morocco are the doors. And they say that each door in Morocco has its own story. Moroccan doors are basically famous all over the world. There is this very interesting element on uh, most of the doors. Actually, there are two very interesting things. Uh, if you get closer, most of the doors have like two knockers, you know, and the one sound indicates that it is a man who is knocking on the door and the second that it is a woman. And this traditional sound allowed a man who was alone at home not to open the door if uh, a woman was knocking. Also, if you look closer, the doors are usually made up of uh, two doors. You have the big door, right? But if you get closer, you have a small door inside a big door. But for everyday use, they used the small door. Also, what is interesting that each part of the city has several public fountains which people can use in case they need it. Another interesting thing are these jars filled with water where generous people bring drinking water for the hot summer days. Anyway, as you travel through Morocco, you will find a very different architecture across the country. There is Casablanca, the White City, Marrakesh, the Red City. If you visit the Sahara, you will see nomadic families living in camps. Then we have Ifran, which was built by the French, so the style is really European. There are small Berber villages in the Atlas Mountains, which are built from clay. There are modern avenues with famous brands, colorful fountains, palm trees, and then very near to this modern world, you are going to find the Medina. The secret labyrinth hidden behind a fortress, which is made up of hundreds or even thousands of tiny little streets. Feels like the time stopped there and life has not changed for centuries.